Christian bride defends herself after flaunting modest wedding dress. Yes, so she posted a TikTok slideshow that showed her wedding dress that she actually made herself. It says, POV, you embraced Christian modesty and your wedding was coming up, but you hated the immodest wedding dress trend. Here's I know the, that's, here's, a, that's a trend. Here's a picture of her if anyone's All right. Looking. There's her dress, um, very like, modest. Uh, she said, okay. so you designed your own wedding dress and had it made for you. Mm -hmm. And on your big day, you became a testament to the fact that modesty and beauty are compatible for there is nothing uglier than an immodest bride who leaves nothing to the imagination. And this broke TikTok. Um, her comment section blew up and everyone was saying she is being judgy. She is. Um, she absolutely is. And she she believes that she is not being judgy. Yes. She's, she commented and said, nowhere did I judge anyone or call out anyone. You all are the ones doing the judging. Um, but her saying there is nothing uglier than an immodest bride, it, it does seem like you're judging. I mean, she's not calling out anyone in particular, but she's judging. And you know, I'm, I don't have a problem with judging. I, if she were like, yeah, I'm judging you hoes, I would be like, yes, queen, <laughs> like go off. But don't deny it, right? That's, that's how I feel about it. And she does have a nice dress. She did a good job. Very Victorian. I, uh, I, yeah, I'm probably, so I, I'm definitely not interested in upholding standards of modesty per se, but I have to say that I, I do believe that there are certain standards of like tacky and non-tacky. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and yeah. so like when I see, I don't, uh, I don't like revealing wedding dresses honestly like i, I, I really either. don't unless the unless they're very tastefully done you might you know show a little cleavage here or i've occasionally seen a little side boob where it, it worked on the dress but like i actually think that um that weddings are not about they aren't about advertising your sensuality and so mm -hmm. i i do and and so i i really find wedding dresses that show a lot or show a lot of cleavage to be yet yeah, to be tacky i just think what's what's that for like a swimsuit i get it you know, or even like a going out in the club, you know, a club dress. I get what you, why you'd want to look a certain way. The context matters. Yeah, yeah, the context. Yeah. But like seriously, on your wedding day, like why are you trying to advertise your body parts? <laughs> I, I do see a lot of plunging necklines on wedding dresses that almost go down to the belly button. And it's just like, why, why is that necessary? Or the open backs or some people just go with like a a mini dress mm -hmm. on their wedding oh, day. I, I, like Kourtney Kardashian. Yeah, I like Kourtney did that. her dress. And she tried to give it this, like, I don't know if she was trying to do this subversive Catholic thing because she kind of had... She was. What, because she, you know, she had the, 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 I'm sure you love that, you know, she had the, the Catholic looking veil and, the, but then it was this really short, and I'm sorry, she doesn't have the legs or the figure no. to carry that off. No. She doesn't, she doesn't, you know, yeah. like, just like me. She's quite stout. There are things that I couldn't, I couldn't pull off, you know. With well, then the, she had her reception in Italy and used all of this Catholic imagery. We did That's talk about right. that That's on right. the show when that happened, and I didn't like it. Um, she and Kanye it was both trashy. like to go and go to Italy and insult the locals <laughs> with their choices. True, true. Um, but I guess maybe this should fold into a larger discussion about modesty because it's been talked about to death on social media in the past couple of weeks following Calendar Gate and Cake Gate. Those are pretty niche audiences. See, I that didn't, we're talking I didn't about even those. know until until y'all told me today. Yeah, what was actually going on with Calendar Gate? And so I just saw, right before our show, I just saw the calendar for the first time. And so I, I didn't even know what this was. I just saw that suddenly the last two weeks, all of these conservative women on Twitter have just been going crazy, like sniping at each other, mm -hmm. and, and conservative men sniping at each other over modesty. And so I thought, what is going on here? And But I actually did look at the calendar. And I have to say, like, those really are some embarrassing photos, mm -hmm. even apart from, like, discussions of modesty or immodesty. But, like, yeah. they were just, like, bad amateur-looking photos. They weren't composed well. <laughs> like, whatever they were going for, it missed the target. It was if kind you're of gonna cringe. If you're going to be immodest, if you're going to show off your body, if you're try going to try to be sexy, then at least, you know, pull it off well. I'm not saying those were not attractive women with great bodies, but it's just, like, Almost every one of those pictures was truly very cringe. That's what Brett said is like, <laughs> the left is good at degeneracy and the right yes, isn't. That is um, and I, I tweeted, um, the left can't meme and the right can't art. 
And there are exceptions to there every are exceptions rule. to every rule. Yes. yes, I mean maybe not the left can't meme though. No, I've never, no. I've never seen a good leftist I, I, meme. Like, my my favorite part of leftist <laughs> memes is just the wall of text they always end yeah. up being because they don't understand that it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. it, it's literally supposed to be visual information Hippie, shortening. Yeah. But arguably, memes are an art form. Yes. So the right is good at that. Um, a lot of people tried to do rebuttals to my tweet with photos of like the Sistine Chapel and to that I would just say like it's it's not the what whatever the Catholic Church was creating and and what Catholic elites in like centuries past were funding uh has no affiliation or similarity with the political right of modern Today. America yeah. so that, that is true my point still stands um the right can't art and I applaud the efforts and there are exceptions but they're they're just not good at it it's something temperamental in uh, the left and the right, that the the left maybe because they're more emotionally unstable <laughs> <laughs> is able to, uh, it, yeah, they're like more creative. And the artistic yeah. temperament I think goes along. We were talking about why you know earlier. Why is it that that the world of the artist is so often a world of degeneracy, as you as you would put and it? Chaos. And I I do yeah. think that it's yeah. So there's something in the artistic temperament about like you even see it in the lives of artists with the with the fact that they don't tend to pull off monogamy as as well as non-artists. You know, you look at the life of an artist and they've got all these girlfriends or boyfriends or five husbands or wives yeah. coming out all over the place and stuff. So I think that it does, the, li the life of the artist lends itself more toward kind of like uh, more chaotic, maybe sometimes degenerate or whatever word you want to use, but a much more sort of fluid, chaotic and less structured. You know, conservatism is, is generally more structured. So yeah, I don't think we disagree on the. I don't think we disagree on the calendar gate. I think I think where I was um, where I was entering into the debate last week with some people is when it comes to women in their their pro like just their normal lives. It seems like people like Pearl Davis they get uh, they they get really energized by um, critiquing the outfits that women just want to wear in their daily lives or when they go online, I guess they think that women should not be um, acting sexual because like the woman who was cooking the, the cake or the pie or whatever, as a tight shirt, big boobs, clearly she was trying to show off her boobs, but that's, a, that's okay with me. So I like, I don't have a problem with it if a wife or a mother dresses in a sensual way. I just think there's a certain level at which it becomes just tacky, like Bianca Sensori. Like yeah. those outfits that Kanye has her in or that she's voluntarily choosing to wear, they're just so tacky. Yeah. Um, Vulgar. Well, Be as tacky as you want, ladies. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem. I do have a problem with it. I don't think that you should sexualize yourself on the internet. It's, I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> it's probably not a great idea generally. Go ahead and do it, ladies. Um, there's, I guess there's a way hey, that is more tasteful than others. Um, like, it's a spectrum. But it would behoove us not to get angry when women don't own what their desires truly are. Because it is advantageous to not verbalize your desires and intentions if you're a woman. Mm -hmm. um, so why would you expect women to suddenly start doing that and being brutally honest about... Uh, what they in, what their motivations are and what so they people, post on social media. So some people were upset because they were saying that these women, um, or I'm sorry, the, the the debate is over whether or not these women are being honest about the fact that they're wanting sexual attention. So like for instance, yeah. some of these women are saying, "No, I'm just being a normal woman," when they've got the tight shirt, the big boobs yeah. in, in the screen. Yeah, I mean, I agree. With I'm you just on that existing, yeah. well, hot. And oh, you're definitely trying to get sexual attention. Sure, attention. it's disingenuous. Yeah, but why would you expect someone to come right out and say what their motivations are when they make that person look bad? <laughs> the better question is, <laughs> did the cake actually taste good? That's what it I looked want. like a good cake. That's that's what I want to know. Like she they, did show it at the end of the video. <laughs> Thank you. Bake the cake, bigot. <laughs> like, was the cake good? Was the was pie the good? Was the cake for, what is, made for a gay wedding? What was that extremely annoying uh, in, intermission we just had there? What was that? What's all that music and stuff for? That's when, when that's called a crisis party, and every <laughs> oh, time okay. we get to a certain amount of, uh, of well, that existed the yeah, last time. Yeah, we I was were like, here. what is that? It's no, a different sound than the last time. Ah, we were, we maybe were that's here. it. Yeah, we, we change it. Yeah, okay. I, 
Almost broke. Okay, I got a question for you guys. Uh, since we, since these topics seem to come up more and more frequently, do you think the idea of modesty is just becoming a trend, much like trad wife? They're just cultural trends now. Mm. The concept isn't, but in in namesake, it's a trend. Is Perhaps. that why so many of the OnlyFans girls do a rebrand where they're yeah. like, I'm trad now. I like to bake pies and read the Bible. Like it's just kind of, <laughs> they'll hop on whatever bandwagon that's, gets that's gonna more be my clicks. Next I, I make this comment all the time. I said, one of the, one of the s sad things about social media is like, I see people, first of all, video editing, like vi good video editing to music has been decimated because people no longer use music that actually speaks to them. They use music that's trending. So for the sake of getting the algorithm in their favor, mm, they will edit yeah. videos to songs that might not even work for what they're doing because because the algorithm's telling them right now this song is trending, therefore that works. I hate that. Mm -hmm. But also in a lot of in a lot of ways, when everything is about being a new trend, new TikTok trend, new social media trend, your your thoughts are becoming increasingly not your own. So if this if these ladies had not heard of a trad wife or had, didn't have a name if it didn't have a, a verbal shorthand for what it was supposed to represent, would they have even found themselves anywhere near that? Any trad wife in the 50s or before then would never have called herself a trad wife. That was just the reality in the culture that she I was like raised this. in. I like this. John Pocalypse says, so many micro trends that have their own subcultures. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and they develop online. And it's it's almost like people people yearn to be boxed into something. And you got to fit into someplace somewhere. I on a on a face kind of dislike that in a lot of ways and it's like, like and it's a, a marketing shortcut yeah. so if you i mean that's kind of that's one of the issues that i have actually in trying to market myself uh is that i i feel like there's not a niche that i fit comfortably in and so and so sometimes people get like confused about well what exactly is her thing what's her shtick and so with like the trad wife thing it's very sort of an it's an easy niche for them they can say okay this i'm a trad wife this is and people know what to expect and know what they're promoting and that sort of thing yeah yes. it's a, it's a weird time to be alive because we've kind of commercialized all of these things that at one point were just part of living and now they're trends that can make you money and I, I think that she should just start selling cakes. That's what she should do. She should just start selling the cake. And if it's really good, that's even better. She can get uh, uh, Terrence K. Williams, and who makes the pancakes, and make cakes with Terrence K. Williams, and they can start a second <laughs> company. It'll be great. I guess everyone's complaint was just like, uh, you know, you can lie about your intentions if you want to while but you're, you're sexualizing seeking, yourself. Yeah, while yeah, you're yeah. like objectifying yourself, but don't make me play pretend with you. I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm I'm okay with that that perception of things. I think that's 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 sound. I mean, I think people. I mean, it's just obvious that it that when you know when you've got your boobs in most of the screen, <laughs> then you're sexualizing yourself, and so. Yeah, I, I think that I don't like but the there, hypocrisy there either. Then so. the, the counter argument is, you know, she can't help that she has big boobs. So they're just she's just existing while having big boobs. And what can she do about it? Um, well, I didn't see the full video. I mean, it, but the boobs were very at least in the, at least in the shot that I saw, the boobs were very prominent. I don't think that if we were if we were designing a show to center around the actual cooking, that the boobs <laughs> no. would have been that prominent. No, I yeah. think they were definitely. I mean, I mean, her her appearance was the focal point. Of but the I do video. have I do have sympathy for women who say, and obviously I'm not one of them, right? It's not my cross to bear in life having big boobs. I do have sympathy for women though who say, look, I've got a big chest, and so I just can't get away with as many types of outfits as you can without people saying that you're that I'm sexualizing myself. Well, this right? is just where it devolves into insanity, <laughs> like. We're just talking in circles at this point. Yeah. You know, That's like the internet. <laughs> I don't know. If you care about modesty because you're a Christian, then you care about it. But people who don't care about it, why would you expect them to? I I don't know. You know, I then this might be has something to do with my age and I'm a little past the time of some of these debates, uh, but I don't know why modesty is such a big focus on the internet right now. I mean, is there a real problem in society are there huge problems in society from women not dressing immodestly i mean maybe there are i don't know but it just doesn't seem to me like of all the christian mm -hmm. behaviors to focus on 
it just seems like modesty is like I, to me there's something almost when when men are so fixated on modesty i'm talking about men now there's something women that does seem a little right now, so it's, it's not men like, it's not even it concerned. seems like women are the ones having these discussions right now yeah. maybe i'm wrong the, a lot of men were yeah. participating yeah. in those yeah. in those arguments though so you were saying my my you know my beef with uh with the trad wife thing is that I think that there are a lot of women, may, maybe it's true that most women, their biggest aspiration, and I'm not, I'm not at all denigrating this, I'm just le le completely legitimately s saying this, maybe their biggest aspiration is, or their, t their main aspiration is to be a wife and mother. But I do think that the, the trad wife model, it just, I think that it reduces women to just these particular roles. And I do think that there is, there are aspects of a lot of women that are still outside of that or there are components of our selves our beings that will not be satisfied just by being a wife or just by being a mother as amazing as that is and so i just don't like i probably don't have a huge beef with the aspirations of the trad wife movement generally speaking you know i think wife to motherhood all that's very important and foundation of civilization all that but i i just think that it's a little bit constricting and unfair to say that women should not have a desire to have the same kinds of fulfillment that men need outside the home. And, you know, we, we procreate for and raise our children for about 20 years. I don't have kids, but we've got about a 20 year period where you have kids and you, and you raise your children, but then there's all that time outside of that. And so there's got to be more to life than just those 20 years. I would say I don't know but I don't have kids and I, I would not presume to be to say that I'm a normal woman in that respect I'm like Pearl Davis who also doesn't <laughs> have we, kids uh, or a husband have a $20 super chat from the manic mustache he said those men are cat whipped I don't know what men he's referring to it's now. probably something way back uh, yeah I don't know that we just talked about <laughs> um but yeah you're saying even though these are archetypes that are aspirational they don't make room for the nuances of life and the way you're thinking about it is actually the way that people on the left think about it because people who are um, temperamentally left wing politically, um, they think more in the nuances and the gray areas and the exceptions and the context. And people who are temperamentally leaning right think in more black and white. And I include myself in that. I don't think about uh, the exceptions. I think about the rules and the generalizations. Well, I guess, and I guess when I, and I, I appreciate that. And I don't have a problem with that, actually. I guess where I would take a little more issue, too, is with the, even the term that, that I used, exception. I guess what I'm trying to say is I actually think that it is normal and mainstream for women to have uh, um, desires and aptitudes that fall outside of the wife mother role and that and actually it's not that exceptional and that doesn't mean that we have to to say to women well you you should okay and i, I and i wouldn't say to women well then you shouldn't pursue a life as a wife or mother or that shouldn't be your primary goal but i just wish that we could have just all of us on twitter we could have debates that were a little more nuanced so that it would understand that yes you're going to have 20 years where you're a mother but then what about all that other time or what about the what about the honest to god truth that being a wife and a mom it still creates a lot of room for dissatisfaction it really does i mean there are you know mm -hmm. talk to any wife and mother and they will tell you this is not all there is um so i don't yeah. know maybe when you become a wife and mom you can you can tell me because well, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't you have kids. you also tweeted something i found interesting like that we're kind of um reducing the aspirations of being a wife and mother down to just what they are on paper which is you know getting married and reproducing as life accomplishments right but um what i wanted to reply to that and and didn't was that there is something outside of just popping out babies that to to parenthood which is that you have a responsibility to educate your children mm -hmm. and you pass on traditions you pass on your values and um faith if you practice faith mm -hmm. and that's how you pass on the legacy and simply getting married and simply getting pregnant and popping out a baby it literally is not an accomplishment you have to do it in, in a way that is aspirational not i mean people I get married and have that. kids yeah. all the time it's right, actually right. very easy any right. woman out there could find some schmuck who would like to settle down with her and you know get pregnant on accident it's not an accomplishment it's all of it 
all of the accomplishments outside of that and actually doing it well and and suffering well when it's hard mm -hmm. that's the accomplishment in it. and i think like people are kind of reducing it too much and boiling it down to does. just the surface level but <laughs> Yeah. There's a Twitter, Twitter and nuance don't coexist. Yeah, so no, don't really don't sad. expect that anytime soon. There's yeah. a $20 super chat here from the Underp Taker says dressing immodestly tells men and especially your man if applicable that the attention of one man isn't is insufficient. He can expect the, that not to change in the future. It is the drive to be uh, ogled so strong in you people what about says. all the men though who seem to want to show off their their wives and girlfriends as well i mean isn't that you can tell me if i'm wrong brett but isn't that a thing like oh, men also totally take a pride yeah, that's, a, that's and, a thing but but so i guess what we're saying is like it's like look at this hot piece that i bagged yeah, yeah, exactly. which is dehumanizing <laughs> i don't know if they realize that but i i do think that that's degrading yeah, but all physical attraction is in a way kind of dehumanizing I no mean, it's not no i mean you're no. none of us would probably be with the partners that we have or will end up with without a certain level of physical attractiveness like someone has to generally speaking i know there are exceptions but generally speaking people have to cross a bar so in a way okay physical attraction is dehumanizing isn't it no 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 just because it's a necessary piece of we were talking about this with love is blind just because it's a necessary piece of attraction doesn't mean that that's all it is it's not all, but it's, it, I mean, no, it's not all, at all, but it's very important though, right? I guess there's a difference between finding someone physically attractive and objectifying them. And mm. I, I feel strongly about that. But um, I think for the women who dress mo immodestly in 2024 now, <laughs> uh, we're in 2024, um, those are standards that do not exist anymore and they have no idea that they're doing it. Like yeah. women that are dressing immodestly these days have literally like they don't even know how trashy no they look. No clue <laughs> how they look. They have no clue what they're doing. That is definitely true for a number of them. And that they also live in a society around a bunch of uh, impotent asexual men who watch porn who yeah. don't even uh, I mean like show them any sexual attention. So <laughs> by dressing immodestly you're not really getting any sexual attention because men are so um timid and, and afraid of even approaching you so the women who are like going out wearing leggings as pants uh, or who are wearing mini skirts and crop tops it's like it's literally just the the default state you're not giving any thought into what you're wearing so i wouldn't portray it as this calculated decision that they're making mm. this is just if you haven't questioned the culture around you this is what you will look like um and i i have talked about that before like I, I I went to a gas station and I just saw someone who was wearing leggings that were the exact same shade as their skin tone <laughs> I don't know how that couldn't make you second guess yourself but um like there are exceptions but I think if you see a woman who's dressing trashy like for the most part that's just what they see everyone else doing around them they don't think about it like it's some kind of, I don't know, like calculated plan to get sexual attention. That from you're that. saying that basically vulgarity has just become vulgarity is the, the culture the status quo. Yeah, yeah. The, the default. Yeah. It's the default. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, do you find? I, well, I, I mean, not to get personal, but just in general, people your age, do women complain about men being timid? I know that th there are lots of news stories about that and surveys and stuff, but they generally do. speaking, that that is a real thing: timidity of men. And romantically, I was around some exceptional groups because I went to um, private religious schools and then um, I went to public university for a very, very short period of time, then went to a private Catholic school that was um, actually a Catholic school, not just in name only. And it was it, it had a lot of like former homeschoolers and a lot of people who had very sheltered upbringings. And um, yeah, like I think. I think I got that sentiment from a lot of my female peers mm. there. Um, I mean, I believe it. it it's seems, not just it a religious like a trend. Yeah, it's not no, just no. the religious um, subculture that has that problem. No, I mean, I see that written about a lot and discussed a lot in articles. And so and I'm just when, not a very When women person. sense weakness, they despise it and they want to yeah. kill it. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.